everybody. It's time to get started. My name is Eric Craig, and I'm sure most people know this is the Philadelphia Association for Critical Thinking. We advocate science and reason in a society that uh, still could use a lot more of that. Um, make sure for students to have signed up in the sign up list and uh, get a hold of some of our free propaganda here, including our newsletter. The editor for our newsletter, Ray Hout, raise your hand, Ray is glad to take submissions and subject uh, uh, observations from anybody. Uh, we uh, have next month, our speaker is actually going to be me on the, the evolution of creationism, taking a look at different creation myths and what these people are into and their failed attempts to push it into the schools. Then in uh, November, we're having Linda Zimmerman speaking on her book on bad science. She's a local person and uh, we'll be covering a lot of that whole subject. And as always, we meet on the third Saturday of the month, most always in this uh, room at two o'clock, and that's throughout the school year. So we wouldn't be doing our thing here in December because they're not open uh, then. Uh, as an announcement for uh, joining membership, Yoriba has a quick word for everybody. Sure, welcome everyone to the Philadelphia Association for Critical Thinking, or FAC. We're so happy to see you here. If you like what we do, which is producing quality programming and speakers just like Rob Palmer and all the others that Eric has mentioned, we would appreciate if you would become a member of FAC. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so any donation that you might make or a membership that you might join goes directly to us to support our program. We also uh, work with the Philadelphia <coughs> Science Fairs and the Bucks County Science Fairs to promote science by teaching middle school students and offering them prizes for their work in the science fairs. If you'd like to join or donate, please see our website, www.fact.com. Org. And while you're there, please join us on meetup.com or Facebook or Twitter as you wish. Thank you, Dereva, and thank you also for being our uh, media interface person. And by the way, could all the meetup people just self identify with a hand in the air for our meetup group? Uh, it looks like a lot of you showed up. Um, in the history of our group, we're going around 23 years. The the question has always been, we have a very important message trying to offer antidotes to uh, the, the, the lack of reason and uh, paranormal claims and uh, uh, bad thinking on all kinds of stuff. But the other side has always been way more popular. All these in search of shows, you could really make money making up falsehoods and peddling them. So the, the question has always been, how do we as a small group respond to that? And I think our speaker of today really will have a good answer to, uh, to, to that. Uh, his name is Rob Palmer. He's uh, been pretty much a rocket scientist, uh, being an engineer to develop space systems, and uh, li lately doing uh, work on Navy missile systems as a mechanical engineer and a uh, software systems engineer. So uh, his talk today is uh, up there. And I'd like everyone to please join me in welcoming our speaker, Rob Palmer, on guerrilla skepticism. Okay, to start off, who here knew about this project before it was announced for this presentation? I see maybe five hands, okay. All right, so I guess the people who know about it will uh, learn a little bit, and uh, everyone else is gonna learn a lot, I hope. Is the volume of this okay? Yeah. Yes. yes, okay. Okay, so first off, Eric uh, kindly introduced my background there, but that's neither here nor there regarding why I'm discussing this subject. Um, so as a team, as probably most people here, I am believe in a lot of uh, alt-med and pseudoscience and paranormal and gobbledygook and just under the banner of woo, and then I discovered the skeptical inquiry. So that's what got me to understand that, hey, these things that I believe aren't real, and uh, who would believe these other nonsensical things? But it, it let me you know, start to think more rationally. 
But it was a long time between then and when I discovered that there actually was a skeptical movement. And that was when I accidentally found the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. Uh, when I discovered podcasting and I was Googling, I'm into astronomy, so I was Googling universe. And I go, what's the skeptics thing? So uh, within a few years of that, I heard another podcast where the Gorilla Skeptics Project, we call it GSOW by the way, um, was mentioned and Susan Gerbic was interviewed and that got me to join up. And as Susan said, if you're a member of this team, you are a skeptical activist. In 2018, actually, I wrote an article on the Gorilla Skeptics. It's in the Factum that's up there, and that was the first time uh, anything of mine was published in this uh, vein. And that actually was an entryway to get it to uh, um, the Skeptical Inquirer. I modified it, and uh, they published it also. And then that got me a job, actually, and they hired me as uh, a columnist. And that was an amazing turn of events. That was just earlier this year. But we were first. You were. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sincerely appreciate that, the chance to do that. Um, so, my column is called The Well-Known Skeptic, and I, I, it took me a while to figure out what my byline was going to be, and that seems an odd name for someone who really wasn't active much, at least publicly, until that point. When you're in Wikipedia, by the way, I had been doing that for two years, but that, you're, an, you're anonymous, unless you don't want to be, but you know, no one knew who I was who was making all these edits. But I did get to know some people at SciCon and otherwise because I was working on their Wikipedia pages, and if you peep, do people know The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe podcast here? So, several okay, it's, it's it's the number one skeptic science pod. It's got a million, you know, weekly downloads. It's, it's quite phenomenal. And uh, this this was what happened in January. This week, hey, don't push forward, okay? This week, uh, <laughs> someone that you and I know, Steve Rob Hammer. Yeah. Rob uh, Rob is a is a well known skeptic, and he's a he's a good guy. So that's where the title comes from. I I, I just I grabbed it and went with it. So, all right, enough about me, Wikipedia. So, um, a lot of people who just speak English don't even realize that the articles are in multiple languages, um, pretty much every language in the world. I'd say at least a huge percent of them. And English is the number one, you can see in the upper left, over uh, 5.6 million and growing. Um, not every uh, article is translated directly. Sometimes there's an equivalent named article, but it was written by someone else in that language and it's totally different. One of the tasks the Gorilla Skeptics uh, do is to translate a, a fully formed, perfect English version into other languages, however. So why do we care about Wikipedia? Like, what's the reason we're even doing this? Well, there are sites which rate website trafficking, and only those three are above Wikipedia in the English-speaking world. That's quite phenomenal. Um, a search engine and you know, two places where you can put any nonsense you want. So Wikipedia is it, and here is actually the list from Wikipedia. The, uh, the column there, which gives four above it, and one is the Chinese equivalent of Google, so I didn't count that one. So the second one is that information on Wikipedia gets mirrored all over the internet. And here's one very simple example. This is the leader and founder of the Gorilla Skeptics. This is her Wikipedia page, Susan Gerbic. That's the article in Wikipedia. There's another uh, entity which came along. They call themselves the Wiki2. They just take all the text, they format it, perhaps more modernly, and then they also grab a related videos off the web. So that's a simple example. Here's a more complex one. This was a, um, an event where somebody basically hoaxed Wikipedia. They made up something and put it on the, web, the, uh, the Wikipedia article for this animal. Right? That lasted for six years. Now, you can imagine how many people read that thought it was true, and some people who Used in other places, hundreds of websites, newspapers, and books permanently printed that this is the nickname for this animal. So there's two lessons there. One is that it's very important what goes on Wikipedia because false information gets propagated. But you know also that you have to be careful of what you read. So third reason is specifically that journalists use it for their stories. So there's so much in the media, it's not it's not common for us to come across one of these things. But as it turns out, that one of our editors is a, is a fighter himself, and therefore he reads the USA Today sports website. He happened to come across this and pointed out to our team. Ronda Rousey, who's a female fighter and an Olympic champion, was written about by USA Today by the um, author Ben Fowles. And instead of a puff piece, which most media people do, he wrote that he was a grief vampire. He was, a, he was criticized as a grief vampire, and he won the truly terrible television award from the IIG. That's the investigative body of CFI, who runs Skeptical Inquirer. 
Well, how did he come across all this information? Well, let's go to the Wikipedia article for Tyler Henry. Right up there, which was added by my team, it says he won the truly terrible television award. And it gives the specifics of it. And then scrolling down in Wikipedia a little bit, we get three times in the article, he was referred to as a grief vampire. That's Susan Gerbic's favorite phrase for these psychic mediums. So, you know, we were pretty damn sure that's where this researcher, before he wrote his, his uh, story for USA Today, got his information by reading the Wikipedia article, which we helped him prove. So the maybe best reason that Wikipedia is important is because Michael Scott says so. <laughs> Wikipedia is the best thing ever. <laughs> Anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject. So you know you are getting the best possible information. <laughs> <laughs> And if you know that character, pretty much, you know, <laughs> everything he says is stupid. So, <laughs> so that, was, that was purposely meant to be. Now, this was from the early 2000s, when maybe what he said was more or less correct. Um, Wikipedia just started. There weren't a lot of uh, controls over it. And it's, it's way over 10 years now. It's evolved drastically. There, there are, you know, editors who follow everything, and they know what changes. If you publish a page, it immediately flags a review. If you put your girlfriend is great on a page, it'll get taken off by a, a bot in about five seconds. So, it, and, and, and there have been independent studies of the accuracy of Wikipedia articles, and especially ones that have to do with research material, science, that sort of thing. It compares very favorably with Encyclopedia Britannica, and in some cases even does better, because if there's a mistake, it can be instantly fixed. So, anyone know Captain Disillusion? YouTube? So, all right. I know Kenny would know him. He, he's an amazing viral video debunker. And he usually has topics that like say, hey, you know, this cloud city appeared and people I give it 10 million views and he shows how it was actually faked, things like that. But he had one interesting episode I caught where he basically did a sarcastic take on, well, you can't believe anything you see on the internet. So this was about Wikipedia. So even if we type the word that's under the video into the internet and find a detailed article about this printing technique, we can be sure that it's wrong. Wikipedia, please, it's run by cabal critical thinking extremists obsessed with perpetual refinement of factual information through rigorous citation of credible sources. You can't trust that <laughs> So in case you spoke too fast for anyone to read, I made a meme up and I sent it around the internet. That's, that was the pertinent part. And uh, the, the, the three people he showed there all have something to do with science-based medicine or Wikipedia editing themselves. The woman in the middle was Susan Gerbic. The person on the right was Tim Farley, who actually had the idea to create Gorilla Skeptics and gave it to Susan, and she ran with it. So, okay, the rest of the talk is specifically, what do we do on Wikipedia? So, what, what is this team? So, it's international. It's, it's possibly predominantly Americans, but even that's a close call. There are people from all over the world. And we edit in many of the language that Wikipedia is published in. And we don't take a dime from anybody to do that. Um, so it's, it's all volunteer. And the, the important part here is, I'll get a little into this later, is that we're well trained. And that's a necessity to uh, effectively edit the encyclopedia without getting your material immediately deleted. And basically, that's what we do. We improve science and skeptical content and remove the opposite from Wikipedia articles. Our ultimate goal, take all the wool off. Of course, that's really impossible, but we, we try our damnedest. And um, as you know, being skeptics, we're in the minority. And, and that's certainly true everywhere, including the people trying to edit the encyclopedia. So you know, they have the numbers, but because of the training that we get with our team, we have the necessary skills, we know the rules of Wikipedia, and we understand how to operate in the corporate culture that is Wikipedia. It's just like any company. If you go in and you do things wrong, you step on people and you're gonna get trounced. So one way to know what an organization is to say, hey, what, what do its detractors say about it? So this is from astrology.co. So actually reading this entire article is what me, that, when, I, when I saw the, uh, the, when I heard the podcast from Susan, I actually, of course, went to Google it. What is this Wikipedia? And what's this, what is a gorilla skeptic in Wikipedia? And, I, and this is one of the first things I found, a long diatribe against us. And I said, okay, now I have to join. 
And Rupert Sheldrake, uh, dogs have ESP, Sheldrake, who loves uh, Deepak Chopra, you know, his ideas and is friends with him, you know, he hates us. So, you know, his basic thing is we're operating contrary to the rules of Wikipedia, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, so what do we do? We apply scientific skepticism to Wikipedia, and we write brand new articles when we see a need for that. We update existing articles, sometimes doing a total rewrite, deleting what's there and changing it. And that's probably the minority of the work we do, the first two bullets there. Making small improvements, adding bits here and there, adding things from Skeptic Magazine or Skeptical Inquirer to other articles which are already written is, is probably the large majority of what we do. So what is scientific skepticism? There's a lot of different definitions of it. I just pulled this from the Skeptics Dictionary. Um, you know, basically yada yada yada, but this is the important part, right? I mean, Carl Sagan is uh, giving credit for saying this, but it was said a lot of ways by different people. And that's really it. If there's extraordinary claims, you need the proper evidence, and fortunately, Wikipedia agrees with that. They actually had a position paper out on pseudoscience because they were constantly fighting the battle, just like we are now, of people putting nonsense on it. So basically, it says, in short, articles must reflect the mainstream scientific consensus, right? You can give a fair representation of other points of view that are different than that as long as it's still science and it's being debated, but pseudoscience does not get a fair shake. Wikipedia is not fair and balanced in that regard. And that's, this is a big help because we have to point this out often, and that usually ends an argument when people are trying to put nonsense on the encyclopedia. So, let me show you some of the examples. So, Goop, does anyone know what this is? I take it, yes. Dare I say, dare I say a snake oil company. So, this was, uh, in Wikipedia you can pull up any version of an article by looking at its history. I'll show you the details of that later. But this is what this is. This is an old version of the article. It's not what you would currently see. And before we got to it, basically, just said, hey, you know, multi-million dollar corporation started by Gwyneth Paltrow, yada, yada. No criticism at all. Well, now this is what it looks like. On the right, we slapped the alternate med banner on it. The table of contents has a huge section of criticism. And the lead, I'll let me explain that. The lead is a section above the table of contents. It is supposed to be a summary of what's in the article in one to four paragraphs, depending how long the article is. So as you saw before, there was nothing in there that was, uh, you know, demonstrable criticism. Now, one half of the lead basically says, yeah, you can't trust this company. So, why does that matter? So, how many people look at this? Well, in a little over a year, it was 177,000 people, for some reason, looked at this article on Wikipedia about Goop. And you can see there are spikes there, and that's probably whenever Goop was being sued for something that was otherwise in the news. <laughs> What the health? This is an article that I worked on it as well as the rest of the team. So this was a documentary that was shown on Netflix, and it was a vegan polemic. Now there's nothing wrong with veganism, but this documentary basically cherry-picked data to make it seem like if you ate meat, you're going to kill yourself immediately. There was very little real science in it, and, and they did everything underhanded to just try to say veganism is the only way to live. Well, so after we got hold of it, there's a huge part where scientific skeptics and dietitians and medical doctors give their point of view in reception, and now one half of the lead points out that, hey, just what I said, it's confusing causation, correlation, it's cherry picking, and it's basically you know, not a real documentary. So why was this important to do? Well, that's the point of one year, they got one half million people to look at the Wikipedia article. And that large bubble in the beginning is when it hit Netflix as their, you know, on their top page is something to watch. And that's when we changed it because we saw that happening. Some, anyone know who Tyler Henry is? Okay, so Kenny, wow. How, how do you know who Tyler Henry is? Did you sit for a reading with him? Wikipedia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So this is his article before. So he is a clairvoyant medium. He actually has a show uh, called uh, the, the, the Hollywood Medium, because what he does is he sits with the rich and famous, and of course, because that happens, 
the media phone all over him. Anytime someone sits with a reading for him, whether it would be one of the Kardashians or Matt Lauer, and that really happened. So, of course, CNN covers it, and they're usually fawning all over, all about what you know what 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 they did. Oh yes, they contacted their dead relatives. So originally, the Wikipedia article was just bare bones, not too much. So now it's listed as paranormal, and there's a huge section where he's critiqued. And as you saw before, the lead, which is a summary of what's in the article, over one half of the lead talks about cold reading, hot reading, that it's all nonsense. And it mentions that independent investigation group, Churchill Television Award, so that's right there. And does anyone care about Tyler Henry? You betcha. Almost a million people in a year. So you guys didn't know who he was, but other people do. So now they read his page, hopefully they maybe think uh, twice about you know, what he does is real. So Blue Whale Game, anyone hear about this? This is perhaps not as well known. Okay, it's a, supposedly, if you looked at the article before, and if you Googled other news stories about it, it was a social media game that caused children and teenagers to kill themselves across the planet. Uh, you know, by, by ratcheting up what you were supposed to do, and the last thing was, oh, now you have to kill yourself. So the Wikipedia article was written by someone who just reflected that. The references were atrocious. They were tabloids. There wasn't anything real. So our team looked into it, took all the bad stuff off, put all the criticism, and put actual references. And basically now, if you read this, you realize it's an urban legend. Mm -hmm. So hopefully parents who go into their uh, teen daughter's room and find a, a photograph of a blue whale in her dress and don't think she's going to kill herself. Because that's actually what the article said. That was a sign that your teenager was in jeopardy. So do people care about this? Yep, 10 million plus people in a year. Yep. So that was a lot about pseudoscience and old med and stuff. But we also do science articles. So we create or improve articles for scientists who don't have a, 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 an article where theirs is bad. Um, and also the skeptical spokespeople that are important to our movement. We're really big into that. We meet them at conferences and we get information and then we might write an article. Um, so those, we write the articles for those involved in science voluntarily or involuntarily. So astronomer Alan Hale, oh, wrong picture. So that's it, astronomer Alan Hale, not the skipper. Uh, I, I wrote that article, his name is the first name in the comment, Hell Bob. He had a pretty atrocious page and now it's actually a, a Wikipedia good article, which is like one half of one percent of all articles on, on the encyclopedia. This is a local boy, I worked with him at RCA and he flew on the space shuttle and had a stub of a page with three sentences. It's now also, it was, it's a really great page. And uh, the involuntary science uh, participant, uh, Felicit, the one and only AstroCat. I had never even heard of her. But yes, it's a real thing, look it up. Another one of our skeptical spokespeople, uh, we wrote one for Ghost Hunter and Paranormal Investigator, Kenny Biddle, who's somewhere in the room. But um, that actually vanished. So we'll talk about that in more detail later. There was a Wikipedia article for him, there is no longer. So, what's that? How does that happen? Who decided? We'll talk about it, we'll talk about it. So. So how does the Grill Skeptics team choose what articles to work on? There's a whole bunch of ways. So one thing is Wikipedia helps uh, us itself. Wikipedia loves lists, and one of the things it has is an automated list of all things by category. So this is the paranormal one, so, and it's by number of page views. So hey, if you want to make an influence, you don't get with the one that gets 10 views a day, you go to the one that gets hundreds of thousands of views a day, right, if you can do that. So we'll look at this list and make sure that the ones that are getting a lot of traffic are well written. Some things on there are obvious why they're on there, and some are not so. Winchester Mystery House. You know about that, Kenny? Yep. Okay, that one I never heard of. Um, yeah, Tyler Henry is right in the middle. So even though you folks have not really heard of him, he even he he emits a lot of readership on Wikipedia. So this is another one, Alt Med. Uh, a whole bunch of things that some of which I understand why they're on there. Maybe some I don't. Uh, everyone knows why Jenny McCarthy's on there. <laughs> And then there's even one for skepticism. You flag an article as in the category of skeptics and that's what you get. I don't know why Sean Hannity's on there. Anyone know? <laughs> no, seriously, no? I don't know why he's on there. Uh, most of the other ones I understand. Scientology is pretty high on the list. Okay, and this is just a, um, a little fact that there are lists for everything and Wikipedia has an article for almost everything. 
everyone's ever seen the, the time travel show on Timeless, this was the discussion of if they could fit another person in their time machine. And you can see why I just had to record that. So another way, besides the Wikipedia lists, are just random chance. You come across somebody at the office talking about some pseudoscience or whatever, you go and you check the article and you say, hey, this is not good, let me fix it. This, this is an interesting case here. I was driving home from work listening to one of the skeptical podcasts I frequently listen to. And they were interviewing this guy named Bob Nygaard. He's a t private eye, he's one of a kind. As far as we know, he's the only one who's doing this in the country, maybe even the world. He busts psychics. He busts psychics who rip people off and his clients have lost and he, he's gained them back millions of dollars. So I went home, of course, and I go, ooh, let me look him up. And no Wikipedia article. But then I wrote this one, so now there is. So previous to this article existing, if you Google him, you would only get that stuff at the bottom, his Twitter account, you know, nothing of note. Now the first hit on Google is the Wikipedia article, and also on the right side, which two ways to link to it, and that's really good, because if someone feels they've been defrauded and they don't know what to do, and if you Google psychic fraud, you'll even get this article. And uh, it lists a lot of cases, his high profile cases that have made the news, and, and you can find out you're not alone, and maybe you know, then you'll go for help. So because I became a skeptical inquirer columnist, I actually took advantage of that situation and I got Bob to sit for an interview. And I did a two-part article where I got to ask him questions that I, I had not seen answered in the public press before. And now because those are published in Skeptical Inquirer, they could be put on his Wikipedia article too. And this is a little bit self-aggrandizing, but I couldn't help it because we usually don't get this from our subjects, but he actually put this on his Facebook account, which was cool. And I wrote the article for Alan Hale. Can't get, I, I picture the guy on top of a mountain at night and that's the only time he's up and he doesn't even have a computer and he's just looking for new comments because it's like unreachable, even by people who know him apparently. I just wanted a photograph. Never replied to me, never replied to his friends. So, um, despite claims made to the contrary, we do not control all of Wikipedia. And Mr. Kenny Biddle is my prime example for this. So this is the case of the disappearing bill. I sat in a, in a workshop that Kenny gave last year in Vegas for PsyCon, which was really impressive. And I said, how does this person not have a Wikipedia article? So I went home and I wrote one. As you can see from the extensive table of contents, there's a lot of material there. And those were the references. I mean, it's all over the place from, from popular science, I believe, to people, maybe even the New York Times. I mean, he's, he's contributed to books. It was astounding that he didn't have a page, so I thought, oh, definitely. But then this got slapped on it. Articles for deletion. So some editor came along and said, no, Kenny's not notable. Now, so the problem with people on Wikipedia is everyone can't have a Wikipedia page. That just doesn't work in the encyclopedia. So they have very high standards of who can have a page and who can't. And it's, it's a gray area depending on what you do. If, if you're a sports figure and you've gone into one professional game and kicked a goal, you can have an article. You can spend your life as a scientist, and if like, the New York Times didn't write about you in extensively, it's not enough, so it is a little odd. So we lost that battle after literally a month of back and forth. So this page disappeared one day, and it, and it was quite like that. It was like, okay, there it is, and then the vote happened overnight, and I woke up and it was gone. And I got, no I got notified because I was the original author that it was gone. So Kenny was <laughs> declared DOA. And that actually is Kenny, I believe. Yeah, it's all sorts of interesting pictures on your Facebook page. And, and then they laid him out, so he, he was definitely dead and gone. <laughs> but, but he's still on the job. I mean, Kenny has not stopped just because they took his Wikipedia page away, right? He does the investigations, he's writing for Skeptical Inquirer, he, he helps other people do their investigation and does it ones on his own and publishes. So there will be more information of him that we can try to resurrect his page again. And definitely we're, we're fighting to do that.
How'd you do that picture, Cammie? Uh, it's a secret. <laughs> I think you do have paranormal powers. So besides creating new pages, most of which last, and editing uh, existing ones. We do make all sorts of smaller improvements to Wikipedia articles. I mentioned that. That's probably the huge majority of what we do. We go into an article that is well written, but it doesn't have anything reflecting the criticism in the lead or the main points, and we just we improve that. Wikilinks are important. Those are hyperlinks that are within an article that point you to other articles. So there might be one on, on a psychics, and it might be pretty good, but it doesn't specifically say anything about cold reading or hot reading. So we'll work that into a phrase, and we put a link to the cold reading and hot reading page on, Wiki on the Wikipedia. We put the banners, and I showed you some of that before. Um, alt mad to pseudoscience is paranormal. We can put citation needed on one statement or a paragraph. That flags the system that, hey, this might be okay, but we need some proof or it's going to be removed. If something is egregiously wrong, we'll remove it and the bad reference. And of course, we add the scientific and skeptical information that I've been talking about and appropriate references for those things. So one example, I worked on this. Um, I was ha reading I, one of those three, those are three separate pages on Wikipedia. I was reading one of them, I don't remember which one, and it, it struck me, oh, how come Yuri Geller's not mentioned here? I guess it, it was, in fact, the Yuri Geller page. And it's like, he failed big time on The Tonight Show. I think I watched that live, I remember that, where Johnny Carson invited him on to prove his stuff and he couldn't do anything. And it wasn't on the Uri Geller article, so I added it. And then I went to add it to the Johnny Carson page on Wikipedia and the Tonight Show page. So now three places that story where, in fact, Johnny reached out to James Randi, the grandfather of modern skepticism, and uh, you know he helped Johnny put the equipment on the table that Uri Geller cannot finagle and do his tricks with. And, uh, and so now that story is available to anybody reading any of those three articles. And one thing that you can also do, as Kenny's got deleted, we can come across articles from people that we know damn well should not have an article, and we'll recommend deletion. And so I'll talk about that now. So what happens is somebody recommends a deletion, any editor can do it, you put a flag at the top of the banner, now someone else can't just go take that off without a discussion happening. So that flags a discussion, editors come in and they give their uh, two cents or more. And it's not a specific thing by numbers of votes. It's you give your points and the points are then judged and then a consensus is either reached or not and an administrator, there are, there are people who are paid by Wikipedia, very few of them, but it's an administrative position. They will come in and they'll make a judgment. And in my case with, ben, with Kenny, I think they went the wrong way. But you know, somebody's gotta make a decision. And then, then it just goes away. So, we can spend all this time, we can create these articles, and it's, you know, if no one finds them, you saw the numbers, so people are finding them. Well, how are they finding them? So there's an internal search engine in Wikipedia. Every page has one at the upper right. You can search for something else. You need to be pretty, pretty accurate with what you put there. Um, so that's not the greatest. We, I mentioned the Wikilinks. But of course, Google is our friend. Um, it's very good. You can put a rough, a rough thing regarding what's going on that you're looking for, and the correct page will be returned. So this is, this is Goop. All of the material on the left is the website for the company, you know, all great videos made about their products, but now off on the right side, on the left, that's on the left, and on the right side, there you go, the Wikipedia article, which I showed you before, which has all the criticism. The article for Tyler Henry, the Hollywood Medium TV show site is the first hit, but then there's also all these videos that are on YouTube of all the famous people he sat down with, you know, saying he talked to their dead relatives, but off on the right, you get the Wikipedia article, which says uh, not so much. I mentioned the Blue Whale game. Previous to uh, the, the Wikipedia article being created, there was only the suicide prevention hotline and other things about suicide. Now at least it's the second hit. Hopefully a, you know, a worrying parent can find it and find out, oh no, it's probably not a concern. I didn't mention this one before, but in the news for the last year or more, the, Q, the, uh, the supposed sonic attack on the embassy in Cuba and then in China, well, if you read the article initially, it was like a done deal, that's what it was, with some secret new uh, technology. And then, um, if you Googled it further, you'd find articles here and there from respected uh, psychologists and scientists saying, no, this doesn't match any actual technology, uh, this is a psychological phenomenon, and they wrote their papers, and now that's on the Wikipedia article. So now it's not such a done deal that it actually was an attack. It's more likely uh, hysteria. I think they would call that mass, mass hysteria at one time. Now I think it's called a psychogenic illness. So here's some of the behind the scenes. 
Uh, people who have edited a lot would know this, but most people never look at these two. I'm going to show you the history page and the front page. So first off, every edit that's made on Wikipedia is recorded and visible to everyone else. So this is an article I picked, one at random, Modern Flat Earth Societies. Yes, there is a thing. So off on the right side, you see the View History tab. So it opens the way you see it, but if you click the View History tab, then you get this. It's a list of all the edits, some general information and a way you can search it up top. And scrolling down, we see some particular edits that were made, and I'm boxing off some ones of, of interest. It gives you the name of the editor, how many bytes were changed, the date, and you can click the page there, and that's how you see an old page, in fact, and it tells you what was done. So editors change things, and how do you figure out whether you know to argue it or not? Well, there's a talk page. So again, right next to article, there's another little tab, which a lot of people don't ever even notice. It's called talk. So if you go to the talk page, well, first, before we go to talk page, on the article page, I added the resurgence in the era of celebrity and social media to the modern Florida society. Because the article basically was talking about all well, the old timey thing where people sent out newsletters and there's very small groups of people. But because of YouTube and uh, Facebook, many more people are believing this nowadays than used to. So I added that section describing all the details. This was it. I put uh, people, uh, Steve Novella from Science Based Medicine, what he said about it, um, and, and other people who wrote, you know, important information regarding why this is on the rise. So back to the talk page. That's what the top looks like. It's some general information about the article. And then there's a table of contents. You can see at the bottom, someone added, hey, I want to talk about this new section that somebody added. And this is the talk page. And at the top, that person said, hey, this is biased. Why is this here? I don't think this is how it should be in an encyclopedia. So then they started to get pushback, not from me who put it there, but from just other editors who understand how Wikipedia works. Are you actually disagreeing with the statement that social media makes this easier? And then that first editor who said he wanted this removed came back and said, yeah, but it should be uh, neutral. So then you got all this pushback from others, which as I showed you before, it gave Wikipedia's arbitration committee opinion on pseudoscience and said, no, we don't have to be fair and balanced regarding flat earth beliefs. And that editor who was complaining went away. So how would we find out that the article was changed? So I put that section on there. If someone took it off, how would I know that? So you can monitor the articles by adding them to your watch list. Now, anyone can edit Wikipedia, but you can only get a watch list if you have an account. And at the top, I, I, I box that. You can also optionally say, hey, anytime anyone changes one of these articles, email me. So I find that very useful. Other people are too bothered with it and they just daily or weekly go in and they look at the list and see what was changed. And that way you can see what they changed, do you agree with it or not, and you can push back if you need to. So we do all this work and the question is, how big is this organization right now? So first I wanna give you, put this in, um, in context. So that's how many people uh, edit Wikipedia in the, just the English version. That's one year, that's... This is how many people, this is how many people have an account, an editing account. Of that, that's how many people are frequent. Uh, and that Wikipedia defined as once a month. So people on my team don't think that's frequent. We do like 10 times a day, you know, maybe more. Um, but that is, it's a large number still. And then, as I said, you don't have to have an account to edit Wikipedia. We don't know how many people those are. Might be more than 33 million, I don't know. But so all, all in all, those are large numbers. And we're about 100 people. So you know, not, not, a huge, not a huge team, but we believe we're making a difference, a big difference. And being a group of skeptics, I'll have to try to prove that. So what is our impact? So first off, a little backstory. We were founded in 2010 by Susan Gerbic. So we've only been around for about eight years. We have 100 editors maybe 120 on the list, but some of those are still going through training. In that time, we've written 670 articles, and that includes total rewrites or from scratch. And right now, the page views are accumulating on just in those 167 by that amount every month. So that does not include the small edits we make, which maybe are 100 times that, but of just those 670 articles. And if you count the totals from the beginning of those 670 articles, that's the number. So 32 million plus and growing at 1.4 million every month. So personally, okay, why do I do this? 
Um, I'm part of that number, so I feel I'm making a significant contribution to rationality. Um, it reduces my frustration, because you know, previously, like a lot of you people, I assume, you argue with friends and family in person or on social media, you feel like you're getting nowhere. And, uh, and, and this is at least a lasting contribution to people looking for information. They might be people who are on the fence, their friend came to them and said, hey, I went to a recce master, you have to try him, he works wonders. Or, you know, I, I, I sat with this medium, you gotta go and, and see the psychic down the road. And maybe they don't buy it and they wanna some, do some Googling and hopefully they find the Wikipedia article to write and, you know, turn them away at the beginning. So personally, since I started working on this about two years ago, my page views every month, whether I touch it anymore or not, are going up by that many a month. And cumulatively, since I started, I'm almost at two million. So that, that boggles my mind. Some best-selling books don't get that. And that number just is gonna increase by 60,000, even if I don't touch it again every month. Those are views of what? Those are times the page was accessed by a person. Any page you've edited. That's correct. No, any page I've edited of the, seven, of the 17, I didn't give my number, the six, uh, of the 670, and I said that's a small sample of what, what our team works on. Those are just the full pages that we work on. Not the minor, I've added a paragraph, I've improved the lead, whatever. And you made that list. You the, picked the articles to have included yes, in the Yes, yes. Actually, we, we have a... Would you feel like you made a big contribution? That is correct. Either from scratch or we changed something like 80% of it. Or totally changed the, the sense of it. That's a big one. The Blue Whale game, I, it might be the same number of bytes as it was before, but before it was total trash. That, that makes right. sense. Yes. So that, you know, I, I've edited, I've created 17 documents um, from scratch. I think four of them were, were totally from scratch. The rest were major modifications. But I've probably touched, I don't know, 1,000, maybe 5,000 articles of a significant amount, not just changing a comma to a period. You know, and we, we can't count those. There's just no way. There's just too many of them. So then the question comes, okay, that's really cool. I'm going to jump on and start editing Wikipedia. Like, why can't I just do this myself? Well, you can, but the details of editing in this uh, encyclopedia are rather daunting. There are many strict rules and guidelines you have to follow, and if you don't do it right, you get into conflict with others, and that's very easy if you just jump in and try to do it. So my personal take on that is, I made an account in the early 2000s. Um, I went to Star Trek The Experience in Las Vegas, decided the description on the Wikipedia site was not at all correct, I changed it from my recollection. There was no source to cite, but neither was there before. And I must have spent three, four hours writing this. The next day it was gone. So I, I figured out, oh, what do I do about that? And I found out how you can revert the revert, and I put my stuff back, you know, with an hour of my day. So I, I gave up, and I, and I don't think I touched it for six years. And I imagine a lot of people go through that and, and get very frustrated. So it's just very frustrating to do, to do it on your own. Here's one example of the things you have to understand, and notability being one of them. This is of a person, or this is of anything you put on the encyclopedia. If you search Wikipedia notability, you get a long list of all the specifics of those. And I just highlighted on the next page the one for just the pure notability. It, it's uh, probably 100 pages if you printed it out, regarding details and rules and a lot of gray areas. So, you know, being on our team, we learn this stuff in training. If you do it wrong by yourself, uh, you can get blocked from a specific page. You can get blocked from even discussing it on talk. And the bottom one is the worst one, and your account gets deleted. So that's the bottom line for why I think it was a good idea for me and perhaps others to join the team. It provides both the training and knowledge of how the system needs to be edited, and also we provide mentoring because you go into a closed Facebook group with people who've been through this and answer any question you have, and even help you out with edits. So I'd like to you know, send the word out to anyone in this, t this, this meeting. I have business cards up front. It would be great if you could join us, if you feel this is a thing you do and you have the time. If personally you don't, right now, think about it in the future. If you know anyone who didn't make it to this meeting who might be interested, hey, give them our card, have them contact us, um, and we can give you more information. We have a URL where we have videos like this presented and that's the Gmail uh, address of our team, which is on my business card up front. You can also follow me at, at that, which I highlight the work of the Gorilla Skeptics as well as my Skeptical Inquirer articles, which usually have something to do with Gorilla Skeptics. And our, as our tagline says, um, you'll be educating the world while you sleep. 
did the work in the daytime, you go to sleep, and people are still reading the page, hey, because they read English in Australia. So this was our radio ad. It never ends. A friend starts talking about his new Reiki master, and someone else posts about another all-natural cancer cure that they don't want you to know about. As skeptics, we dedicate a lot of time trying to protect those around us. But there's a way you can reach millions. Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia is a group that is working to keep the best skeptical information at everyone's fingertips in all languages. Join us. Training is self-paced and fun. And we have our very own super secret Facebook group. You'll be educating the world in your sleep. To find out more, email us at gs. So that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Did, did not. That was a did I not. did not. And I think it's a great effort because uh, there's a guy, Brandon Lee, who says that the effort required to fight misinformation is an order of magnitude higher than it takes to create it. <laughs> and I think you're, this is a time efficient way to do it as opposed to getting on meet, uh, on chat groups and other things. So I think that it's excellent in that regard. And another point you made is about being fair and balanced. In my classes, Paul Off is a guest lecturer, and Paul has been here as well. He's a top vaccine expert, and he pointed out, here's an example you have from your talk here, he says, we have this false sense of bad, fair and balance in modern society. He says, when an earthquake happens, news organizations don't feel the need to talk to the flat earth society to get their technical input on what happened. There's a giant shaker under the planet that was designed by somebody, <laughs> we're not saying who, but it was Alan. So it's a small point, but it's really, I think it's a significant thing, and you mentioned it. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the term Greek vampire. Uh, is that used synonymously with psychic media? Correct. Yes, it is. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Susan Gerbic likes that term. She writes a lot of publications where she's debunked specific psychics, and uh, I don't know if she coined it, but she certainly has publicized it in the skeptical community. And that's why it's on that page. Here. What are some of the nastier responses you've gotten from rude people uh, when their banners pop up on their on their pages? I, I can't say it's certainly nasty. Uh, a lot of times, people who fight back from that side don't actually have accounts, um, so they don't they don't say anything on talk. They'll just hey, I'm going to delete it. That'll probably stick, and it's not within a few seconds. It's back. Um, for people who actually are considered editors and know what they're talking about, then that's a little bit more difficult, and certainly there are gray areas. Um, all right, one example is, let's see. Yes, so I put the paranormal banner on about 20 UFO articles, including Roswell, Render Some far, Forest Incident, that sort of thing. And um, the banner itself, you can click it and it pops open. And the people who constructed the banner, and actually it's in the Paranormal Wikipedia Project, decided what's paranormal. And they had everything from ghosts to, to Bigfoot to UFOs. It said UFOs, alien abductions, was paranormal. Okay, seems to fit for me. I got it taken off by a senior editor who claims, no, Roswell's not paranormal because it didn't happen. But, the, but the, the, only one, the only reason people care about it. So, so it's, 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 I didn't, you know, you can only fight so many battles, it wasn't that important, it, it doesn't have a Not the hill to die on. No, that's exactly right, Susan tells us that. There's thousands of things to work on. If a fight becomes too difficult like that, walk away. Maybe come back later, but do something else. What's the distinction? None of the paranormal. That was exactly my argument. Well, how long, on average, would you say it takes you, I guess, when you're doing a brand new article to put up on Wikipedia? How long does it take? Well, sometimes a few hours. Yours was months and months and months. Because I had to get everything right, because I knew you. No, but. <laughs> No, actually, I didn't know Kenny when I wrote the article. I had just gone to the one uh, presentation. Uh, and yours was probably fairly typical, actually. We feel like we need to put a good article up. There are, there are projects we see 
I think it's called Red Women Red Links or something like that. Women in Red. Women in Red. Thank you. So there are people who go and they want to, for good reason, because women in science uh, are underrepresented on the encyclopedia and elsewhere. So they've made it their project to write articles about women, women academics. But by actual Wikipedia standards, it's questionable whether or not they have enough notability yet. And so those, those articles appear, people are writing them very quickly, and there's a lot of them. And therefore, they don't put a lot of time into them. They're maybe three or four paragraphs long with not that many references, which surprised me. It's a philosophy of our team not to put an article that we could consider that a stuff. We don't write stuffs. We write full articles with 30 or more references, like I did for Kenny. Uh, for um, Bob Senko, the astronaut, there's probably 30 references on there. So we want to prove notability so it cannot be challenged. Well, most of the time, and that works. Um, and, and for Kenny's question, maybe that takes, you know, a lot of us are part-time, we have full-time jobs like me, can't do it all the time, but it's hard to figure out hours, but maybe if I was to do it in a, a constant one-time session, I don't know, it might be two days to do it, 48 hours or something of work put into it, over, but usually that's over like, it could be over three weeks, it could be over a couple of months. Is there software you use for the reference insertion? Yes, there's a there's a template that pops up, and you could cite use a template that for a journal, a book, a website. My some other memory things. is that's somewhat arduous. I have a new the what the new software that makes it much simpler. I don't, I don't, maybe it is new. I don't I don't find the one that they have too arduous. I haven't looked at it for a long time. It's a form with with fields to fill in. And once you get the hang of it, you do one or two. In fact, you can do it public and, and say save and then look at it, and then there will be errors in the bottom, and it'll say what the errors are. So at least you know what to go back and, oh, I forgot the title, or I, I put the date in the wrong format. So then you pop it open and you change it. It's not that bad. Uh, you, meant, you mentioned the issue that you might put a lot of work into, in, in, into an article, and then the administrator you know, senior administrator at Wikipedia will, 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 will kind of rule against you. That raised the question to my mind, have you considered some form of entryism or trying to, trying to yourselves become the administrators, seeing as it appears that Wikipedia's standards are so aligned to your own ways of, of thinking about things anyway? Might that be a complement or an alternative to what you're doing? I'll suggest that for Susan Gerber. Well, are you an admin? As it actually has come up. It's not that hard to suggest. I'm an admin. I mean, I've, I've been inactive for about 10 years, but I used to do a lot of it, and it wasn't that hard. You just, somebody would nominate you after seeing you, you do the work, they post for a while, and if there isn't any objection, you're an admin, and you've got a little, you can look at disappeared articles, like you could uh, go make sure that there was a copy of Kenny's article. All right, we, well, we saved it, that's what I, yes. I didn't mention but, that. We have a copy of all the code that could go right back after we modify and update it, but yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. I, I see the elections for those sorts of things come up, and you know they, we're all volunteers and individuals, and no one has felt like doing that yet. So I can't say it's, it's not impossible. That would be a good idea. You had um, three slides with lists. Yes. And I was popular one. pages lists. Popular pages lists. So I'm curious how Sean Hannity would have. <laughs> well, I, I, as I said, I don't know. I don't actually know. And so what is it actually? It, what, how does any one of those appear on that skeptic All right, so that's what, a, what so, is being pulled? So in? that's a good question. So um, there's several ways that Wikimedia, Wikipedia makes lists. One is categories that are on the bottom of the page. Then another way is there are things called Wikipedia projects. So I'm a member of Wikipedia project skepticism and paranormal and atheism and religion. So you got the complementary things there. And you could put that banner on the talk page. It doesn't appear on the article page, but it's in the talk page. And that's a notice to the people who are interested in that subject. They have a group, essentially. Kind of like GSOW, but not as organized. Um, on each of those subjects who care about those kinds of pages and make sure that you know, they're happy with them. So that, that template, that flag, is what's used by the bots to go out and collect that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, then, then there's another yeah. set of lists, which I didn't show here. But at the bottom of a page, you can categorize something by clicking a little plus, typing something in, and if there's an existing category, you add it, and it adds it to that category page. So Sharon Hill, who is a um, skeptical podcaster who decided she didn't like the word skeptic anymore, recently wrote a blog on that subject, and, and I just wrote my last article that came out yesterday in Skeptical Inquirer, 
discuss the subject of labeling, and Wikipedia likes labels. So, you know, uh, we did change the text on Sharon's page to say that she doesn't want to be called a skeptic anymore, she doesn't like the label, and it's got connotations and that. But there are, as I mentioned in my article, there are problems in Wikipedia with that, because you can't go much further than that. She is categorized as an American skeptic. Her podcast, Left Green Credibility Street, is categorized <coughs> as a skeptical podcast. So just because she doesn't like the word anymore, you can't necessarily go into Wikipedia and delete them from those categories. There are other editors that go, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. This is what it is. So, and, and that's because at the bottom of those articles, there are categories that are listed, she's an American skeptic. So therefore, when Wikipedia compiles a list of skeptics, she's on a page with James Randi. What's her preferred title? Yeah. You have to read her article. Well, she, she, she runs Doubtful News, so maybe doubt her. Yeah, two points. On well, the matter of Sean Hannity, uh, he's a notorious um, uh, climate change denier. Right. So that, that could be uh, some of the traffic yeah. uh, for yeah. that. And I think some other science as well. But I'm not quite sure what that is. Okay, that makes uh, sense. That makes and then sense. for the um, terminology as being objective to uh, uh, skeptic, uh, I responded to Susan uh, Jervis yesterday uh, suggesting critical thinking. Yeah, I, I mean, I told her that. <laughs> he said I'm going to speak, and it's not, there's no word skeptic in this society in here. So. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon, how would like that? Okay. I was wondering, is it around, we were talking about the sort of frustration of having put many hours into an article and people just have it removed from their text. Is there? Well, well, no, it, was, it, it took about a month. The one that I think it, was, <laughs> it was a long, long, bloody, set of disagreements and arguments back and forth on that talk page. But of course, the end result was that the work that you didn't put, put in, at least for now, has, has not been so much. Yes, hence Kenny falling down the long stairway. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm wondering is, maybe this isn't possible because of the way uh, sort of authority is distributed uh, or dispersed in Wikipedia, but is there any way to get advanced clearance before you do a lot of work on something? Yes. Nope. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, the answer is yes. Except uh, generally when we know what we're doing, we don't have to wait for that process because it could take months and we just don't want to do that. Otherwise we wouldn't get anywhere. And like if you lose one in a while, you lose once in a while, it's worth it to not wait. Because literally you can put it up there and people, it's up to them to get to it and they've got a long list of articles to look at. And you know, when you're a new person, if you're just doing it on your own, that is a very good idea. But you know, since we have, I don't just write the article, before Kenny's was published, Six people on my team looked at it, helped it, made suggestions, made other edits. Susan Gerbic, who's been experienced with this from the beginning, said, oh yeah, that's definitely gold, put it up. So occasionally you're wrong, but you know, we, we, don't, we don't feel that it's you know, effective for us to wait as a team to, to put articles out there. Hi, um, I'm not sure I heard you correctly, so I apologize if I got the story wrong. But uh, were you addressing the issue of uh, the people in the embassies getting sick? Is that what you were talking about? Yes. Okay. So the reason that I'm interested in that particular topic is that uh, I used to be very much involved in audio equipment because I'm a professional musician. And uh, out in Bryn Mawr, they have Bryn Mawr music or Bryn Mawr audio that they used to have. Um, I was talking with the guy who ran the place, and they had a high-end audio equipment. And he showed me that it is possible to manipulate the uh, speaker system, the, the high-end speaker system, to create certain kinds of vibrations that can affect you. And he gave me a sample, and he said, watch this. And there was no sound, but I got incredibly sick after about 15 seconds. So I know that there is such a thing. That doesn't necessarily mean that in this case it was that thing, but I'm just questioning how they know if you said there were people who denied it, how did they know that it wasn't that thing? Well, I think if you read the page right now, it, it's kind of not, oh, this is absolutely wrong, but this is, you know, people believe, including uh, Donald Trump, who said, oh, we were attacked, you know, outright, like there's no question about it. And then you had other people, in, in medical people and psycho psychiatrists, psychologists, mm -hmm. looking at it and giving the alternate possibility. And so I'm just saying those possibilities are on the page now. But my understanding is that that story has developed even further yep. and that there's they're now saying there is a chance that it could be microwave yep so and that, that's so on the page now too because it if, is, if, okay. if it's published in something that's a notable source mm -hmm. it could you know have the validity to be on the article and that is on the article mm -hmm. but how do they aim that specifically at that was my question the first time i heard it how are they aiming it 
system. Yeah, I've read, I researched it a lot time. with all the stuff that's on the page, both pro and con, I, I don't believe it. Could be wrong. But I think the page accurately reflects the, the, the problem and, and determining that it absolutely was an attack by this, absolutely by this type of weapon. And it has a lot of hallmarks, as you say, a lot of hallmarks of other mass psychogenic illnesses in the past. So if somebody says, hey, be aware of anything when you go into the office today, then you're going to feel sick, even if nothing else happens. So. Yeah, um, Loud enough that we can hear your question, please. Yeah, I don't want to give his name, because then it gives my account by the way, people on Wikipedia, generally anonymous, uh, it'd be easy to figure out who I am from the information I've given you, but I'm not going to do that bold and give it an article specifically in that regard. But th th there was a psychic medium who had nothing but positive stuff, and it looked like, in fact, it's one of these people who went in and wrote his own article, because uh, it just was so blatantly promotional with nothing else written about him anywhere else. So uh, that's the only one I ever heard of. And uh, yeah, that, that had a very short discussion period of maybe, I think, the minimum it could be is a week, and there was like barely any pushback, and it said you have to leave it. Which we actually, so that's a little bit interesting of the story, we regret that, because he's someone who, uh, now we took an interest in debunking, and it would be nice once the, once it gets published about this person, that we could, you know, have a place where people could Google and find his article to say, oh, you know, this guy advertises that he can talk to dead people, but uh, we proved he's reading Facebook pages. So, so in fact, if, if we if we get that article published because of this thing uh, that happened, we um, may resurrect the page ourselves with that information on it. So, uh, it's interesting that you can only see that on certain browsers, and I don't know what the reasons for that are. I have Firefox and Chrome, and I forget which one. One shows that, and one doesn't. The other one might just say. It was article from Wikipedia as a default, but if, if you're looking at the right browser, you'll see the class it is, and uh, there's classes that go from featured to good article, GA, to uh, then there's all sorts of letters, A, B, C, D, E, whatever. So there's maybe eight classes, and basically it's, it's how much work has been put into them. It's not about the accuracy of them, but it's how good they are towards the best article on that topic that could possibly ever be written. So, the top category is called the Wikipedia Featured Article. And I think the numbers are like one tenth, no, it's probably less than that. It's probably 0.05% of all the articles on Wikipedia are that class. Then the next category is Good Article, which you have to um, submit for a, a thorough review. I've been through that twice. I have two of my articles that are good articles. Uh, you, so you're taking some, uh, some heat for doing that because they have to be above and beyond wrote the article and you're very, like you invested in it, okay, no, you can't say this, this can't be, there's too many quotations, take the quotations out, that's not what we do on Wikipedia. And I went through that and I did in fact make the changes that were requested and I got my two articles to be good articles. Then under that there's A, B, C, D. Generally, if someone does nothing, it's a C. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means uh, they didn't put it through another review. It's got, yeah, it's got, yeah, it, it had one, one set of eyes probably on it by an admin said, yeah, this is good, it's not bogus, let's put it up. Uh, then there's some that are below that, which I think it says it's a start or a stub class article. It basically is like if you've got one paragraph. Will we see from time to time the request for donations for Wikipedia? Should we donate? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I don't work for the organization. I don't know anything more than you do about that. Really? Okay. My understanding is that it's to keep the servers running, and they do have some people on staff. So, And, and it, I guess it's Wikimedia Foundation that's asking for that, which is the parent group of, so Wikipedia isn't the end all, right? It's Wikimedia Foundation. You want to talk to this? You know more about it than I do. Um, and Wikimedia Education is the uh, nonprofit educational end of Wikipedia, and they do a lot of um, educational work teaching how to use Wikipedia, connecting it, for example, to libraries, uh, galleries, archives, museums, teaching young people, high school students, college students to use Wikipedia in curriculum. They do a lot of curriculum integration to bring um, critical thinking into the hands of young people. So there's also, there's also Wiki quotes. There's also Wiki University, and then so there is a lot of other things that Wikimedia Foundation runs. And I know that donations for everything. I know.
that it's hard for you to say because obviously you have bias here, but do you find that Wikipedia in general is, um, as a living document, it has become more of a source of truth than like a standard reference book? I mean, when I was a kid, you went to the library and you got the Encyclopedia, Britannica, World Book, whatever. Um, the, when Wikipedia first started coming around, there was kind of a, uh, a certain amount of dubious, uh, people would say, oh, it's written on Wikipedia. How true is that? It's just, I know that you don't work for the company directly as a skeptic of it. I wonder how, how you feel the reliability. Yeah, so from, as I, as I mentioned with the Michael Scott uh, you know, joke and also the fact that there are independent uh, rating sources, which by the way, there's a Wikipedia article that is named Reliability Wikipedia, right? Not written by Wikipedia, but it has sources who have done uh, evaluations of this, and that's where I, you know, I, I read that, so, okay, it's, it's as accurate as Britannica where it matters. Uh, they give like important errors, I'm not talking about typos, that sort of thing. So just from that, and from my personal experience, if it's an article that's at all contentious or has to do with science, alt-med pseudoscience, uh, it's likely people care about it, uh, and therefore there's more eyes on it that would ever be on somebody who's assigned to write an article for Britannica. Um, and, and because of the rules of Wikipedia, generally, there is more up-to-date information on it, too, like the Cuba attack. I mean, I don't know if there's an article in Britannica on that, but probably within a day of being published in the Times, it was on that, you know, on the article in Wikipedia about the Cuba attack. So as I mentioned, a wiki project, it's actually called wiki project, one word. And that's on the talk page, and that's what calls it to the attention of the people on those projects. Um, I, I showed paranormal and ultimate and, and pseudoscience, I think, uh, and skepticism. So definitely there would be one for history. I don't know how it gets categorized, how far it gets broken down, and European history, American history, I, I don't know, because I don't follow it. But you know, it would make sense that there are categories. So what, what we found is that because there is a wiki project skepticism, you'd think that's what we'd be working in, little skeptics, but it's kind of not managed by a specific person. It's more of a, hey, let's all do this, and therefore you don't have anybody directing it or even you know, pointing the way of what to do. And Susan Garbeck first, when she decided she was gonna do this, went there and joined that group and said, hey, there's nothing going on here. So like, I'm glad to work with you people, but I have to start something myself because this is going nowhere. So that's how she found it, little skeptic. But we're all members of that team also. So when we flag something that says, you know, this is paranormal or this is real or this is skepticism related, we'll flag it that way. And then anyone else who's not a member of our team but is on one of those projects will show an interest sometimes and go look at it and give their two cents regarding, you know, what should be on the on the page. So that wasn't a category change specifically, but go ahead. It was, it was a banner that I was putting on the page that said this is a paranormal subject. Okay. So it may be a category addition, right? That's what the banner meant. Slightly, yeah. slightly different. Okay. But go ahead. What was the question? Um, so what I was wondering, it sounded like that person who disagreed with you yeah. was able to have authority to make a unilateral decision. No, I, no as, as I mentioned before, you got to like pick the battles. And I, I, I argued with it. Other people agreed with me. More people agreed with him. Okay, I see. It. So there's never, it's not like you've got the senior tier people who have authority to take no. decisions on themselves. It's always collective. So people can investigate the, like I have a user account, and then one can look at, okay, what are the contributors to Rob Home? That's my username there. And, and they can see how many edits I've made, and they can even look at every edit I've ever made to see if they, you know, kind of trust what I do. And if it's a really, really new person, that might come into play. Oh, you just started. Why are you keeping your input here? On the other hand, if you click on somebody's and they got 100,000 edits, I personally have 6,000, something, 6,500, something like that. But no, 6,2, I think, after two years of you know, strenuously doing this. People have hundreds of thousands of edits. So, okay, like anything, okay, this person's got a lot of experience, they haven't been banned, 
like we should at least listen to what they're saying. And, and in fact, I think that was one of these people, so okay, I'm gonna back off of this. So sometimes seniority in that regard, how extensively you've edited an encyclopedia, which means you know, people have agreed with you generally, you haven't made you know, um, an annoyance out of yourself where you've been banned, it, it does give you some uh, credibility. I just have a general philosophical question. Uh, based on all your experience with all these changes that are made, all these edits, what's your general take or wh what have you learned about the educational system or uh, critical thinking among the populace? Why are there so many differences of opinion on so many topics? Well, that's above my <laughs> <laughs> Psychologists, as I understand it, just believe certain people are programmed certain ways from a young childhood and can't change, and other people, um, like me, believe in woo before, and now I don't. Kenny was out to prove ghosts are real, and now you know, knows they're not, and tries his damnedest to convince others of that. Some people can change, some people can change, some people can't, and why that is, I don't know. I wish I did. That is the question for the ages. Some people need to believe those things. Ooh. Need to. I have a friend. And it shakes them. Yeah, I have a friend who, work, who I work with who believes in almost every paranormal thing you can. <laughs> and we, we, we argue nicely. Uh, he's a co-worker, so you know, I, I don't want to get him too pissed at me. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty polite about it. But he basically said one day, Rob, if you take away this, I have nothing. <laughs> oh. 